Hi, my name is Andrew Cooley, and I'm the Director of Coaching for the Colorado Rapids Youth Soccer Club. Today I'm here to introduce a new format for our parent education, as we're always looking for new and innovative ways to deliver information. Today's topic, we're going to talk about the player placement process and how we are evolving when placing players in teams. As a club, our objective is to establish a pathway for players in which they will have fun and grow in the game. That starts with placing players in the correct environment, exposing players to appropriate competition to develop and evaluate them, and providing feedback to players on their development. Hi, my name is Kincaid Schmidt, and I'm the Director of Coaching for U11 and U12 Girls at the Colorado Rapids Youth Soccer Club. I'm going to talk to you today about why we as a club have chosen to move away from the traditional tryout process for those players who are already participants in our competitive program. The tryout event is one of the most anticipated events in a youth club's calendar year. However, it's also one that causes the most anxiety and stress for players, for parents, for coaches, and for staff. For this reason, the Colorado Rapids Youth Soccer Club is elected to move away from the traditional tryout event for players born in the year 2006 and earlier who are already currently participating in a competitive team with the club. The tryout event provides an inefficient environment with large numbers and limited time, which creates an imperfect process for us to identify players and place them appropriately. A club's evaluation of a player shouldn't be made over three days, but rather be based upon a body of work that respects the time and the effort each player has invested over the course of the year, as well as their career with the Rapids Youth Soccer Club. This allows us to have increased transparency with the player and the family in the process. Rather than completing the process over three days at a tryout event, we can have yearly conversations or season-long conversations with families to give them a report of where their player is, which culminates in the placement at the end of the season for the prior year. The player movement process that we put into place over the course of the year also affords the opportunity for us to correct inefficiencies in the initial player placement throughout the course of the season and through the year. This also allows us to emphasize and value the players who have spent time in our playing style, in our curriculum, our philosophy, and our culture, and give them priority for the teams within our club. The inefficiencies of tryouts as a result of differences in athlete maturation, particularly between the ages of 11 and 17, will be addressed through the player placement process. Now let's talk about player placement. The goal of player placement is to assign players to teams that are developmentally appropriate. Now within that, there are a few considerations. The idea is to provide an environment that balances the player's technical, tactical, physical, and psychosocial resources with the external pressure they will experience in training and games over the course of the season. Player-centered decision-making is an important piece of the player placement process. However, at certain ages, getting team balance is essential. For example, in a 2002 team, we cannot have six attacking central midfield players. Balance is needed for these players to play and develop in a team. Player movement is a tool we use to manage this playing environment. It is also important to remember that a player's resources are not fixed or predetermined. Now let's look at what happens when a player is placed incorrectly. When it comes to incorrect player placement, you really have two scenarios when it comes to the player's environment. One in which the player's resources are too developed for the external pressures. The other is when the player's resources are not developed enough for their environment. Let's look at a player whose resources are too developed for the level of pressure. What this can lead to is overconfidence and increased likelihood of unfocused work. It can affect relationships within the player's peer group. Technical and tactical solutions may incorrectly be adapted. What this can lead to is a reduced passion and excitement for the game. This can also affect relationships between players and parents. While we are moving away from the traditional tryout model for the majority of our competitive teams, it's still a necessity for players who are entering to the competitive program for the first time. So all of the players born in the year 2007 will enter our U11 competitive program and will participate in a three-day traditional tryout event. We've already gone over why the tryout event is inefficient, but the tryouts for U11 players 
allow us to provide an objective analysis of a player and get them a starting point within the competitive program. This will be the first time that many players will move from being evaluated in a subjective environment with a parent or a parent volunteer to an objective analysis of their current abilities as a soccer player. Once we place a player initially after the tryout event, the player placement process takes over as they move through their career in the competitive program. We can correct for inefficiencies in the tryout process by moving players throughout the year as suits their development and as is appropriate for them at a given time. Let's look at player movement as a tool for development. Player movement is when a player is invited to play or train in an environment in which they are not rostered. This can be when a player is moved up a level or down a level, depending on the player's resources and external pressures. So why player movement? We can use player movement to increase or decrease the external pressure a player experiences in their environment. We can use this to determine the appropriateness of the player's placement. Evaluation of a player in a new setting is also important. This provides context to the appropriateness of the player's placement. So what is being evaluated and how is it being evaluated? The first piece is talent identification. So where do we start? Talent. What is the player's performance potential and how high of a ceiling does that player have? What is the likelihood of a player reaching their potential? Work ethic, resilience, trainability, these are all things that can affect a player reaching their potential. Next, how should we look at talent? Each player has qualities, technique, body and ball control, insight, player's ability to read pieces of the game, personality, speed, and explosiveness. What we are looking for at the Rapids are players that fit the playing style and the game model in which we play. We are also looking at players that meet the positional and functional qualities within the team. We also must be aware of the high performer versus the player that has high potential. We'd like to thank you for watching our video on the player placement process. Please look for the next video in the parent education series in which we will go over the team formation process.